Hey guys, Tennessee Frank here. Uh, it's with kind of a heavy heart that I'm making this video. Um, I know most of you are probably aware of the uh, shooting that took place in El Paso. Uh, news is saying 20 dead, uh, by one account 26 injured. I saw somewhere else where it said 40 injured. Um, very dark day for Texas, very dark day for El Paso. Uh, my heart goes out to them. Um, my question is just how long is it going to be before those on the left take this tragedy and start pushing for more gun control? We know as gun owners this happens time and time again. Uh, every time something like this comes up they say, oh we need more gun control. It would stop stuff like this. Um, well, uh, the shooting that took place last week in California, they have pretty strict gun control laws didn't stop it there. Uh, we've seen other mass shootings take place. Uh, Massachusetts and uh, other states, uh, Connecticut, uh, where they have fairly strict gun control laws. I mean, pretty much what they want to push forth uh, on the nation. And it's not stopped the mass shootings there. Um, Chicago has some of the strictest gun control law in the nation. There are shootings there all the time. Uh, the, the 20 people that were killed, that's tragic. Um, like I said, my heart goes out to them. But there's hundreds of people every year killed in Chicago. And they have like a total lockdown on firearms. So gun control is not the answer. Um, what I think is the answer is we need more citizens to carry. Uh, there was one gentleman, a black gentleman, which just goes to show heroes come in all colors. Uh, I mean... You can't look at someone and know if they're a hero or not. This gentleman's in the Army. Uh, he had his concealed carry permit. He had his gun with him. Um, his name is Glenn Oakley. And while I don't think we should speak the shooter's name, which they've not released it, but even when they do, I, I don't care about him. Uh, but this gentleman, Glenn Oakley, stepped up. He had his gun with him. He started gathering up kids and trying to get him to safety and he knew that if uh, push came to shove he was armed and he could defend those kids uh, even at the cost of his life and I think more people need to take that attitude uh, we need more sheepdogs out there right now uh, there's a lot of places I won't go because they have metal detectors and they're going to deny me my right to defend myself uh, and I don't feel like being put in that situation I don't think I, I could live with myself if I went to a, a, a rock and roll concert or a ball game or somewhere where I had to just totally be disarmed and someone came in and started shooting people and I had to stand there and watch, I don't think I could deal with that. Uh, that's not how I'm made. Uh, I, I, I have to be armed. I have to be able to do something. And, and being armed is, is the best way to do something. Um, if there's ever a shooting that takes place, I'm going to have my gun with me. That's just the way I roll. And I'm going to go toward the gunfire, and I'm going to do what i got to do. I'm not going to stand by and watch someone kill people. And I know there's a lot of you out there that feel that same exact way. You carry on a daily basis. And you're not going to let someone just waltz through and kill people. Uh, you're going to do what it takes to stop them. And I know we're out there. Uh, thank God we're out there. And I just hate it that we're discriminated against so, so badly with all these no guns allowed and no weapons allowed and gun-free zone. They don't know what they're doing when they do that. They're taking away our fundamental right to protect ourselves and those around us. And it needs to stop. We need to stop this discrimina discrimination against those of us who choose to carry to defend ourselves and others. Uh, it's just not right. We, we need the, the, the right to defend people. 
So, uh, like I said, I know it's just a matter of time. Uh, the Democrats and those on the left are going to come out. They're going to push for more gun control laws. They're going to say, oh, we need, you know, to, to ban these weapons. From what I understand, this time it was an AK. Um, I thought that it was an SKS used in uh, the, the Garlic Festival shooting. Apparently that was an AK variant. Um, I guess uh, AKs are getting jealous. They're not getting enough press, so uh, all these nut cases are going with AKs now instead of ARs. Um, either way, I mean, these firearms are, are what the Second Amendment are designed to protect. They're what we're supposed to be able to have. And they're going to push to ban them. I know. I know we're going to hear about legislation to to ban these so-called assault weapons. Uh, you know, the high capacity magazines and everything. Give it time. It, it's going to come up. It'll be there. President Trump. I don't know where he stands. I mean, he banned bump stocks. Uh, he doesn't like suppressors. Uh, he's a good president in some ways. Second Amendment wise, I don't think he's that great. People. I really don't think he's on our side, um, but we really, right now, we, we need to pray for the people of El Paso, pray for those families that lost people and, and the people that have been injured for their recovery, um, but it, it's a dark day in this country. Uh, we have to start standing up for ourselves, carry, carry everywhere. I don't care if you're running down to the Circle K to get a gallon of milk, slip that 380 in your pocket. Stick that single stack nine in your belt line. Do not be caught disarmed. Uh, we, we have to be more vigilant now than ever. Um, so, uh, you know, pray, pray for El Paso. Heart goes out to those folks. Uh, terrible, terrible what happened. So like I always say, either we stand up for our rights or we're going to sit by and watch them go away. You all have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Maybe come back with something a little more positive here later on. So uh, have a good one, folks. We'll talk to you later. Tennessee Frank out of here.